return of Octomon. Remember Octomom? To this day, no one has any idea who's the father of her 14 kids. Even her own mom said this. Yes, it was kind of scary. Is he someone she dated? Did she use a random donor? Or is something even shadier going on behind the scenes? Well, guys, new details have leaked exposing the truth on Octomom's baby daddy, and it's a lot creepier than you could have ever imagined. My history was was haunting us. The problem is this, it's followed us. Nadia Sulman, AKA Octomom's baby daddy, is definitely the biggest question mark surrounding this crazy family. So Nadia had all 14 kids through IVF and they've never had a father in their lives. She allegedly couldn't have kids naturally, which is how she's been able to get away with hiding her baby daddy's identity over the years. But she has given some specifics about this man's identity and there's one man who fits that description. So meet suspect number one, Nadia's ex Ex Dennis Bowdoin. It was fun. It was fun. Um, Nadia's a really great girl. He dated Nadia in the 90s, but he claims that she was quite different back then. She looks different, sounds different. You know, it's just, just not the not I remember. Now, he seems to have been blinded by love because even back then, she had apparently also been trying to get pregnant and she had asked him to donate some of his genetic material to her. Not the Nadia whom he says asked him to donate sperm, saying she had ovarian cancer and had to act quickly if she wanted kids. And the crazy thing, Dennis gave her multiple donations. But you don't know that she was doing any IVF during that time. You just know that you were given samples. Correct. And he didn't question giving her what she wanted. And you just didn't think to ask? No. He would just give her the donation since he was really in love with her and dreamt about starting a family with her, but she didn't end up getting pregnant back then, and eventually she and Dennis broke up. But fast forward 10 years, he's now seeing Nadia on TV having a bunch of kids, and Dennis broke down in tears. What is the process like for you? What are you going through here? I just think about... <laughs> I guess it just hit him that these babies could be his. And what makes it even scarier is... She says the same father for all 14. So Dennis was heartbroken thinking these kids could be his babies. And like any good man, he decided to step up for the kids. So he reached out to Nadia and offered to help raise the babies. But was Dennis being a stand-up man or a creepy ex-boyfriend that could not let go of the past? Because Nadia claimed... Nadia has said the father of all her children is a platonic friend who she's already notified. She told us it's not Dennis. And here's where things get downright weird. Dennis said even if he is not the father, he still wants to be involved and help raise the kids. And he said this while he was still married to another woman with kids. So imagine how his wife must have felt. But here's the really creepy part. In the beginning of this interview with Good Morning America, we can see Dennis here reading old love letters from Nadia. And does anyone else think it's weird? Dennis and Nadia dated like 10 plus years ago, and he now has children with another woman, but he still kept Nadia's love letters and he still offered to help raise the kids even after Nadia said he's not the father. So it seems pretty strange, right? I mean, Dennis sounds more like a creepy ex than the father of her children. And first of all, for these to be Dennis's kids, Nadia would have had to have kept his donations fresh and usable for about 10 years. And the thing is, genetic material normally doesn't last longer than five days at most. And obviously you can freeze it, which is what all the genetic material banks do, and if you do freeze it properly, it could actually last 10 years or even more. So it's not like Nadia just straight up couldn't have used Dennis's genetic material that he gave her, but it seems pretty unlikely. Considering the way that he had donated it to her, it wasn't done professionally at all. It was just something that they did at home a few times. But here's where the evidence started leaking out that Nadia could be lying about Dennis, because people started to notice all over the internet that Dennis is almost a spitting image of several of the kids. Kids. I mean, look here, guys. Dennis does look very similar to a lot of the kids. And even though Nadia claims Dennis is not the father, he didn't actually believe any of it. And he even said that he wanted the kids to take a DNA test to prove whether they were his or not. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like the DNA test ever ended up happening, which is kind of a shame since that way we would have known for sure whether he was the father or not. But if I'm being honest, he's likely not the one because of another weird leak that 
I'll get into in a second, and there's just not enough evidence pointing to it. The best thing he could have done was just leave her alone when she didn't want his help, especially because, once again, at that point, he was actually married and had kids of his own to take care of. And he said that his wife really wasn't happy about the whole situation either, which makes sense, and he would have pretty much had to leave his wife and kids to go live with Nadia, at least if he wanted to actually be of any real help. And Nadia's spokesperson even addressed this, saying that Dennis was just trying to get back together with Nadia, which she obviously wasn't interested in. So that leads us to suspect number two, David Solomon. So four of Nadia's older kids actually have a father listed on their birth certificates, and that would be David Solomon. And we all know that Nadia said all of her kids had the same dad. So that would mean this person is also the dad of the octuplets and her other two kids. But here's the strange thing. There's a lot of evidence proving that this guy doesn't even exist. Like she made him up entirely and put him on her kids' birth certificates. And I just have to ask, is that even legal? I mean, we all know he's listed as the dad because the birth certificates of all of Nadia's kids leaked to the media and his name is David Solomon and the birth certificates also list his date and place of birth, which is where things get even weirder. They say that he was born in Israel and that would check out with Nadia often saying that the father of her kids is not American nor European, but beyond that there is a lot of mystery surrounding David because every single birth certificate lists his birthday as being something completely different, literally not one of the birth certificates has the same birth date for him, and it's not like there was just a mistake with one of them. And another thing is that his surname, Solomon, is actually really similar to Nadia's surname, Sulman. And obviously, this could just be a giant coincidence, but put that together with the inconsistent birthdays, and it just seems like David Solomon is a cover up that Nadia created for the actual father of her kids. And in fact, many people, including her own dad, have accused Nadia of just making up David Solomon entirely, and with all of the coincidences around him, I could kind of believe that, especially since all of Nadia's kids actually have David's last name. So this all could have been a way of actually just giving her kids a different version of her own last name, but that's all obviously just speculation, and if you think it's possible that Nadia just used an anonymous donor, that's also most likely not true, because Nadia herself has claimed that that's not the case at all. But of course, Nadia hasn't been known to always tell the truth. But anyways, what do you guys think? Do you believe that David Solomon is actually a real person? person, and who do you think is the father of Nadia's kids? Could it be Dennis Bowdoin? Guys, let me know in the comments down below.